Uh, yesterday, you heard from various people who are actually using uh, or directly involved in, in selling services having to do with uh, big data um, <clears throat> in HPC, technical computing, and it's what we call, we've kind of come to call it high performance data analysis. Um, I kind of hate terminological debates, but um, this one is a compromise term that was arrived at over a period of years because the commercial, the purely commercial companies, at least at that time, were definitely not thinking of themselves as doing HPC, et cetera, et cetera. This proved to be a compromise term that seemed to work with everybody. And that's why we call that. We, we kind of got into this starting tracking about four years ago. We were minding our own business doing HPC when we started getting our doors banged on by big commercial software companies like SAS, SAP, and others saying we have customers, commercial com customers doing algorithmically complex high-end analytics uh, that we don't know how to address. So we think maybe HPC is the way to go. And in the meantime, and you heard some of that yesterday, um, that commercial side of it has really developed pretty well. Um, if you were at our Dearborn high performance computing or high uh, HPC user forum meeting, you heard from companies like PayPal, purely commercial companies and what, what they're doing. So we wanna just uh, talk about this. And, and what's happened is that um, we kinda had demand out there to start a report series a couple of months ago on high performance data analysis and that proved to be popular enough that uh, people asked us to do also a full service so I'm not going to try to sell that service because I'm on the research side but there are one pagers like this if you're interested to, to look at that uh, in the back there. So with that I'm going to ask Chirac Dekate who uh, is partnering with me in this uh, kind of endeavor to uh, to make a few remarks. That's it. That's it. All right, so fascinating couple of days, right? Um, yesterday we heard a lot about astrophysics and um, part of yesterday we also heard a bit about big data from different perspectives, from a graph analytic perspective and uh, from a traditional Hadoop use case kind of perspective. And then we had a visionary talk from Intel uh, which, uh, which positioned big data and HPC uh, in a very unique context, context. And it turns out that our definition of big data and Intel's definition of how it is seeing the ecosystem of big data and HPC evolve uh, seem to be very complementary in nature. Uh, I will not spend too much time on the slide because you heard a uh, talk from John yesterday. And I think uh, only John can do justice um, uh, to this statement. Um, as Steve said, we have been tracking the space quite closely. Uh, we have had several uh, uh, discussions from a varied set of folks uh, and diverse verticals uh, speak about the scale of data challenges, the scope of data challenges that they face, and the kinds of infrastructures that they use to solve some of these problems. In the second half of the stock, you will see uh, some of the use cases that we are gathering as a result of this uh, process. Uh, one thing I must say, um, and, and uh, to add to what Steve laid out as a context of uh, HPDA, um, the high performance data analysis uh, definition is one that is not just being created by IDC. It has been created as a result of conversations with end customers just last quarter, Earl, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think IDC had over uh, several thousands of uh, end user uh, interactions. This transcends from HPC to big data, from small to big, um, you know, and, and they're doing science of different kinds, traditional high performance computing uh, to the emerging nature of, um, of Hadoop kind of use cases. So, so we, are, we, are, we are speaking to the customers and what you see uh, here today uh, is a manifestation of some of those feelings, some of those uh, attributes that we are seeing in end user problems and the kind of vendor responses that we are seeing. Um, what is HPDA? Uh, Steve did a very good job of uh, presenting uh, the context of HPDA. We are seeing these two uh, intersection points between HP, HPC and big data where we are seeing uniformity in the kind of uh, infrastructures that are being used to solve tomorrow's problems, uh, the kinds of uh, software technologies that are emerging, the kinds of use cases that are emerging, and um, uh, we are seeing these patterns uh, occur over and over again. Um, and, and, 
this is a uh, more traditional data definition of big data, um, the four Vs, uh, overview, o overuse and abuse. Uh, so rather than spend time on this, I'll focus on uh, what HPDA is all about. Now, rather than go through the slide and provide context, uh, what happened yesterday was fascinating. And yesterday morning stock, uh, there was a gentleman or professor by the name of Brandt, I think, from University of Arizona. He was presenting his astrophysics code. Uh, at first glance, not a very close relation to what you would term as big data. And then I think Steve asked, Steve Conway asked an interesting question. Uh, for the kind of graph-based work that you're using um, to solve your uh, astrophysics problems, do you see any uh, tangential markets? Well, the answer was um, provided later on in the day when MCN, Radhika from MCN was presenting her use cases. A lot of the patterns, the data structures, the mechanisms used to solve both of these class problems, one would be termed as uh, HPC, other being termed as the emerging graph, uh, graph analytics or, or, or so on. But the kinds of methodologies, the kinds of techniques, uh, kinds of tools and technologies being used to solve these problems were extremely complementary. And from an IDC perspective, we are si seeing a lot more of these use cases emerge and we are calling them uh, big, uh, HPDA. Uh, simulation. Uh, many folks in the HPC ecosystem um, have large problems that they're trying to solve. Uh, many of them go into terabytes, exabytes. I think one of the, uh, one of the IBM presenters today mentioned uh, 14 exabytes per day uh, was the, the data volumes being generated by uh, the square kilometer array. So it's clear that even in, even in the traditional context, the, at, the, at the very least, the volume and the value to be extracted from these large data sets uh, is complex and is very real. Um, analytics, if you will, is a newer uh, entrance uh, to this ecosystem. Um, we had a couple of uh, interesting talks today from Steve Wallet, who mentioned um, Levenstein's algorithm, uh, which was talking about or Levenstein's distance, which was talking about uh, how uh, different terms or, or, or names are phenologically related and, and, and so on. And now you take that and, and uh, extrapolate that into a use case where you are trying to use that in a defense context or uh, a fraud analytics context, uh, you have a very different kinds of a, kind of a use case emerge. Uh, you, you, you're not just comparing names, but you're also comparing different patterns, different algorithms, different um, modalities of behavior, if you will. Steve, towards the end of this presentation, will present a use case where rather than focusing on terms, um, the focus in that case was more on graph patterns of behavior and how that was used to solve and detect uh, fraud and so on in a credit card kind of a context. <clears throat> now, what does this mean for the overall HPC ecosystem? Uh, what you have seen in the last one and a half days uh, represents a more updated version of this dialogue. You have seen systems vendors present their roadmap. Uh, you have seen processor uh, vendor, processor developers uh, mention their roadmaps. Um, you're seeing diverse kinds of technologies emerge, some based on ARM, some based on MIC, some based on GPUs, and so on. Uh, but you will see, uh, as you observe their discussions more closely, you will see that all of them are starting to circulate around the same kinds of problems, same kinds of challenges, and they're tackling the same kinds of issues. I think the NVIDIA uh, person this morning, Cyril, mentioned uh, memory management and how uh, they are working towards solving uh, that part of the puzzle. And we had uh, Steve Wheat from Intel speak about how they are using their technologies to not just focus on computation, but also also talk about uh, communication and the challenges of computation and communication occurring simultaneously, and how Intel is addressing that part of the ecosystem. So what you're seeing is a dynamic evolution of the ecosystem uh, to target, uh, to address the needs both of the HPC uh, markets and the emerging HPDA markets. <coughs> um, at the heart of the challenges is the notion of data movement. Uh, many of the many of the end users here cited uh, the scale of uh, systems not being uh, sufficient. Some of them mentioned that they upgrade their systems and uh, the the end performance remains the same. And uh, in our conversations with the end users, uh, they have constantly mentioned, they frequently mentioned that one of the biggest challenges that they encounter in their algorithm kernels, the reason that kernels don't scale, uh, reason uh, exascale is a bit far further away than we would like it to be, is this challenge of data movement. How do you solve the memory bandwidth issue? How do you make um, 
system architectures, node architectures uh, that are more durable, more effective, uh, not just um, in terms of computation, but in terms of data movement and uh, overall uh, in terms of energy efficiency. We are seeing some very interesting architectures emerge in that context. I think HP Moonshot is, is one of them, which is applying a very different kind of technology uh, in a very different manner. And then we also have technologies from Conway Computing emerge, which is applying a very focused set of technologies and with the notions of personalities uh, allowing programmers and next generation developers to solve problems in very different ways. <clears throat> so at the heart of the point I'm trying to get to is the ecosystem of the problem space, if you will, is diverse. The kinds of technologies that we'll need to solve these kind of problems are going to be diverse fundamentally by definition. And for some kind of workloads, you're going to have GPUs that fit naturally and very well. And I think um, uh, Mike spoke about the class of problems that um, uh, Mike um, or uh, Phi solves very effectively. And then there are going to be class of problems where FPGA-based solutions uh, such as Conway computers are going to be uh, effectively, uh, ad, you know, uh, are, are going to match very well. Uh, but to step back, and there was one particular slide from, uh, from um, John's discussion yesterday, which was rather interesting. Uh, he was talking about the intersection. He presented a Venn diagram of HPC, big data, and in the intersection was insights. But I would urge you to uh, think about this. Rather than looking at it from a slice, uh, extract it, create two cylinders, one HPC, one uh, big data, look at the use cases, look at the system software, look at the kinds of infrastructures, processors that you're solving, and you will see that the, the line gets blurrier and it, it's, it's, you're solving similar classes of problems. <coughs> um, IDC is tracking this market, not just in cons uh, customer interactions, but also in terms of market sizing and market scoping. And um, uh, we, are, uh, we have just published a couple of different reports, one surrounding storage, one surrounding servers, uh, in terms of how fast this ecosystem is going to grow. With this, I'd like to turn it back over to Steve uh, to quickly go through the set of slides covering use cases. Yep, uh, just gonna mention the, uh, thank you that the servers and storage forecasts and so forth are a lot more detailed than this and go into the verticals and so forth. But uh, what we're trying to do here is not just be theoretical, but really kind of be driven by what people are actually doing out there in the real world and where they're spending money. Um, I'm not gonna go through all this, there really isn't time, but, but these are some of the use cases that are popping up. And what we're looking for is use cases that are not heroic one-offs, but are things that are re repetitive. Um, that look like they're going to resolve potentially into economically important markets that can be pursued. Um, this, just real quickly, is one. This is University of Phoenix. They, they started a couple years ago to, um, as we talked to them, to, um, to use HPC for the first time and to drive very complicated algorithms to essentially act as the admissions office and the retention office, even down to tracking students to, because um, it's very expensive to lose students once you have them, to refer them or suggest that they visit the counselor's office if they look like they were getting into trouble. Geico represents a whole set of commercial companies coming up to HPC for the first time. And what characterizes Geico and that set of companies that we are, are working with is that they pre-calculate. You know, Geico um, it has to calculate uh, phone quotes for every product they have for anybody who potentially could call to get one. What they do with HPC is uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 60 wall clock hours. Um, they recalculate every week for every product, for every adult and household in the U.S. so that they can have an up-to-date quote and respond in the time frame there. PayPal is an interesting one. If you were in Dearborn again, you heard from them. Um, and what they were doing is they were using um, Hadoop um, for a while. Uh, they got, they're pretty aggressive with technology. And they, for fraud detection across eBay and Skype, it was taking them up to two weeks using that methodology to get what they needed. Um, and that was a lost opportunity because by then it hit credit cards. They installed HPC um, hardware, software, storage um, from a vendor. 
And um, with that, in the first year, they were able to tell management that they caught $710 million of fraud that they would not otherwise have caught. As a result, I just talked to their CTO again last week, Jim Barisi, and he said that um, as a result of that, they are aggressively hiring people with HPC backgrounds and talent right now. They're really gonna ramp up fast. And I said, well, what's your next thing you're gonna use HPC for? And they said, personalization. Somebody um, is walking in a mall and they're gonna be walking by a Jamba Juice um, store and we know from other things that they like Jamba Juice, we wanna send their cell phone uh, a coupon right there. And that's, that's their next big project. Um, and they're using, it's called graph analytics. And this is just some of the volumes. So I'm not gonna go into detail. If you want more detail on any of these things, catch us, either of us another time. Here's one that's becoming economically important, um, which is healthcare fraud. Um, this is CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, U.S. government. Um, fraud there is well in excess of $100 billion a year. This is an outdated slide. They're actually able to catch just under $5 billion right now, but they have evaluation projects out to um, Oak Ridge and San Diego with the goal of unifying five incompatibly, <laughs> incompatible databases and um, trying to run across all of them on various platforms that would uh, be willing to work with them. Um, this is another whole category, and uh, Schrodinger is, uh, you know, into drug discovery. They're a pharma kind of company. Making sure I watch the time, I'll be through in a few minutes. Um, and they're looking for compounds, and what they did is you see they get a little bit of HPC on the ground and everything else they burst out to the cloud for and they work with, uh, I'm sorry, with cycle computing, uh, it turns out. And what they did is for every run they grab about 50,000 cores of Amazon um, to do that. And now that's become standard operating procedure for them. I'm gonna skip some of this. And this is kind of, yeah, the last one I'll, mentioned because the others, some of them you heard for yesterday, but we have a whole mess of use cases because tracking what people are actually spending money on that looks like it could be economically important. This one, companies like United Health Group, Kaiser, WellPoint, all those folks are ultimately aiming to do the exact same thing over a period of years, which is to move from today's um, procedures-based medicine to outcome-based medicine. Outcomes-based medicine is highly personalized, therefore it's very highly uh, data intensive. You see the process described there. And when we're in Boston, you'll hear from um, the head people of Optum. They're gonna be speaking in September at our user forum. Um, and uh, Optum, which is a unit of United Healthcare, a $120 billion company, is, pop, is, is putting an initial $500 million into building a center next to MIT. Uh, for pre-competitive, open um, research to advance the state of the art in healthcare data analysis. HPC will be nicely involved in that. Um, that's why they're interested in working with um, this community. And anybody uh, who, any, any organization willing to contribute data or expertise um, is willing to, uh, can participate and get a seat on their governance board. Mayo is the first one up. They're contributing um, five million records for that. So with uh, that, I will kind of stop it so we can have lunch on time. Thank you very much.